Let's clean out a chicken coop and get this compost started. Hey, what's everybody out there in YouTube land doing the day? So, um, I wasn't going to film this, but then I was like, you know what? I don't ever really film a lot about my animals and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, today we're out of the garden and well, out of the gardens, got a new name for one of them. Maybe we're, we're going to see, but, um, so today I am cleaning out this chicken coop i already got some of it out i'd started it before i started the video because i was like i just want to get this done but then i was like oh, i'll shoot a video on so basically what i'm doing ooh. <laughs> is i'm filling up my dump trailer and then after i fill up my dump trailer i'm dumping it into the compost that that's why i want the compost right here because it's right here by my chicken and most of my inputs is going to be from the chickens. Uh, I also have inputs from the rabbits, but they just right here around the corner as well. So pretty much this hill that we're on right here, this hill is where my, where my animals are. And so I want the compost up here where my animals are because that's where I'm getting that nitrogen source from. Um, let me take you inside and show you what we got. All right, so we got everybody up in here want to be nosy today. <clears throat> Normally they're out in the in the run. All the babies are over there. They're hanging out with mamas. Um, but I took all the, I had them sitting on eggs, so there was a bunch of eggs in here, and so I took all the eggs out yesterday, and now. It's time for me to clean this joker out. Um, something I want to show you about when I made the, the chicken coop is I put linoleum down on the floor. It's holding up really, really well. Um, I guess it's been there for five or six months now. So it's doing really good. And I overlapped it. So this, this one is on top of this one same thing all the way back so that way when i rake because basically what i'm going to do is i'm just gonna get in there and rake this out and i'm not ripping that that uh piece right there up you know and it's not side by side on it so you get down in the little crack or something and you happen to rip it up because once you rip it up it's it's over they're gonna just they're gonna keep scratching at it and it's gonna be a hole there and then your your underlayment whatever's down there is gonna just just uh get saturated and you never know you could get um critters to come up through there you know they scratch on it enough and make a hole in it and then you got critters coming up from the bottom so anyway in this coop i got two laying uh boxes over there they it's two is enough for them um, I have 13 total chickens, 12 hens, and two roost and one rooster. Um, now with the nine additional, I don't know how many I'm keeping, but I'm imagining that I will be closer to the 20 range, maybe. You know, uh, hopefully I have that many hens in that, that that got hashed out. But if I get up to that, then I may keep another rooster and I may create another laying uh, box, just one more, maybe over here in this corner or something like that. But, cause I can easily punch through. Well, actually I got my water timer out there, but I can punch through on that other side right there and make another uh, laying box over there. Um, anyway, I'm not gonna be on here too long today. Just, uh, Wanted to show you what I'm doing with the chicken coop. I'm gonna pull all this out. I'm gonna put fresh shavings back in. And then this is gonna be where all of that stuff from in there is coming out here to. It's all gonna go in here. Um, that's all the eggs that were in the in the uh, coop uh, 
yesterday. So I had to get rid of all those because you don't know if they're good or bad or whatever. So I had to get rid of all those. And I started recollecting eggs today and I already got six. So, so um, they're already back to laying and uh, that's a, that's a good thing. So I'm not going to really mess with most of these weeds and stuff. I am going to take this out of here because basically that was the old plant that I threw in here and it rerooted and started growing and now it went to seed. So I will get all that out of here, but the rest of those weeds and stuff back there, I won't really worry too much about. I'll just start piling this on top of there. Um, some, some things to know about compost. Hold on, let me get you turned around here. All right, so some things to know about compost is that you pretty much have four components to it. So you have your green, your green is your nitrogen source. So there's a lot of manure in, in this. I'm gonna be putting some more manure in there. Um, and you know any of your green vegetation that's around, you can put in there and that'll be your green source. That's your energy. That's where all the microorganisms and everything is gonna get its power and get its energy to, to break this stuff down. Then you need something to break down. That's your carbon. So that's your browns, okay? So obviously I already have um, wood chips in here. Um, I'll also throw in maybe some, some dead leaves or whatever. All that's considered browns. Um, and those are your two major components. But you got two other components that people overlook that you really, really need. Um, one of those components is you need air. Well, actually, let's go back. You need water. Uh, you don't want it to be saturated, but you want it to be a little moist. You want to be able to, they say, uh, you should be able to wring it out like a, like a semi-wet sponge. Uh, just get a few droplets out of it, you know? Um, and then you also need air. And so air comes into the, to the work that needs to be done once you have your pile set you need to start turning it and when you turn it you're introducing air to it and all those microorganisms um that are breaking down your your green i mean they're breaking down all of your carbon um sources in there um they need that air they need water you know they're working hard it's just like human being you're out here working hard you need water you need something to eat and you need some air, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get this pile started and then I will show you me, I guess, cleaning out the coop and then we'll, we'll get back on. <laughs> So you're supposed to water this down, you know, about every six inches or so. Um, I, I didn't do that because I'm dumping this whole big old cart in there and I don't want to, I don't want to take my time. So um, I'm just watering it really, really good right here. Um, but if you look, see I'm water, I mean, that's a pretty good amount of water on there and then Look at that, that's all dry. So it takes a lot of water to get it started. Um, 
we got some good rain coming in the next uh, few days. So I will leave the top of this open and let that rain uh, saturate down in there. And then after that rain, I may cover it. I'm not sure about that yet. I'll just keep checking the moisture and turning it and hopefully come out with some really good compost uh, in a couple months. All right, so I went in the house, grabbed my coffee grinds. Um, I put those in there. I put some worm castings in there that I've had for a long time. So I just threw those in there. Um, as you can see, there's some rabbit manure in there. I threw some old fish that's been in the freezer for a while in there. Um, all that stuff's great stuff and it'll break down. And um, like I said, hopefully produce some very, very rich uh, compost. <laughs> something else I wanted to show you guys about when I made my chicken coop um, I did not attach this to the ground and if you, I mean to the floor and if you look up top it has carriage bolts up there okay so that way when I'm coming and trying to rake underneath here I can just pull the rake right under it and I don't have to worry about getting around um, that post down there because I'd imagine that if if that was you know to the ground you'd have to get back in here and you know try to get in between here whereas I could just start on this side over here and just pull back and it comes right on up you know so uh, it's just something you know that I added to the, to the design that I thought would make cleaning it out easier and it really it really helped you know it's I thought that was pretty smooth right there. All right, and that is all that I'm really going to clean out in here. Um, as you can see, the floor really is holding up well. Um, I used that roll of alo uh, aluminum. <laughs> I used that roll of linoleum from Home Depot. I think it was 24 inches, 25 inches um, by like 20 or 50 feet. I, I, I don't, I don't remember the exact size, but, um, it was just a little roll, you know, and it went on super, super easy, very forgiving. Meaning if you press it down, you can still get it back up off of the, the, uh, surface and, and restick it and it sticks well. That's the key, you know, cause a lot of stuff you can get back up, but then it won't stick back on there. Well, just make sure that you sweep whatever that floor is, vacuum it, get all the dust off of it, and then you won't have any problem putting that stuff down inside your chicken coop. Uh, but that's that for now. I didn't have to clean off anything up here. Like they're not pooping on their, on their, uh, their roost at all. They're not pooping on that one. They're, they're pooping outside over there. So, um, I'll get all that up some other time, but Nope, this is cleaned out for me right here. And I'll go outside and clean out the um, the the boxes over there. I'll go, I can access those from the outside. I'll clean those out real good and put some fresh shavings down in there as well. And this is five bags of shavings that I'm gonna throw in there right now. What I just took out was 20 bags of shavings. So it breaks down really, really well. Um, so I think it was four loads of this uh, this dump trailer. I don't remember the size on it, but.
but it's the bigger one that Tractor Supply has. Um, and so, you know, for this to be, for this to be 20 bags worth, it really breaks down over a six month period, pretty daggone far. So what I tend to do is I put about five or six bags in there to start. And then like in two weeks, I throw another bag or two in there and I keep throwing them in there um, until about a month before I am going to clean it out. And then I stop throwing new bags in there and I just, I just wait to clean, uh, clean it out. So anyway, let me get back to work. Um, all I have left really is I'm going to layer this back on layer this on top of here i will uh rake all of this up in there i'm gonna put another pallet on the front right here to hold everything in there and for now that is basically it i will keep stacking on top of this one hopefully we can get you know up pretty high i got a bunch of wood chips over there that i may end up incorporating into this um, I'll do the wood chips and then I'll do some more rabbit manure and just keep mixing that. And then, um, hopefully that will, uh, do the trick. So, well, that's it for now. Um, at the end, I may show some pictures of the finished product, what it looks like, but that's about all that really goes into me cleaning out my coop. Nice and spick and span, ready for some new shavings and starting a compost pile from everything that was in there. So this is all about being sustainable on your property. I got chickens. Yes, I get eggs from chickens, but I also get manure from chickens. So I take that manure, I put it in my compost. I make really, really rich compost from it. Same with my rabbits. Um, I will be doing meat with my rabbits here soon, but I don't now I just use their manure, but I put their manure in there. I get really rich compost that goes into my garden. And then in my gardens, I grow veg for myself. I grow some for the animals and it's just a complete circle. All right. So that's about it. Um, basically that's kind of my homestead and philosophy right there in a nutshell. This is how I practice homesteading, this is how I uh, become self-sufficient. Some people call it regenerative agriculture. Um, and, you, and you can definitely call it that as well. Um, I kind of think that's kind of a, you know, one of those buzzwords or whatnot, but I like to use the word su sustainability because that's really what I'm trying to do. I want everything here to work as an ecosystem and work for each other. Um, me personally, I am a very team oriented person. So it's very hard for me to be around people who aren't team oriented. And so kind of my homestead is built that way. My homestead is built as a team. Everybody here is part of the team. So my chickens, they're part of the team. They provide a resource for me as far as food, but they also provide, um, nutrients that I will use in my garden. Um, same with my rabbits. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the coach of the team. That's the way I look at it. So I'm the coach of the team. My players are here and they're all integral parts of this team and this uh, group effort that we, that we have here. So a lot of times, I, um, I use the word we a lot. And my homestead is just me. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm here by myself. Uh, but I do have my animals. And so I really, like I said, I say the word we a lot because it's all of us. I have to take care of them. If I don't take care of my animals, my homestead fails. So they depend on me and I depend on them. We are a team. So when I say we're growing this or we're doing this. That's why I say that because it's my whole team out here uh, coming together for one common goal. But anyway, I'm gonna get off my soapbox because I could go I could go on that one for a while. But uh, anyway, if you haven't visited 
uh, my Hoss uh, affiliate link yet, please go visit it. Go browse. Um, I, I'll, I'll put the link down below, but I won't really put any keywords because nothing here is really Hoss related. Um, but just go and browse. You know, they got garden supplies. They got seeds. They got all different kinds of uh, stuff there that's... Uh, you know, really, really, really good quality stuff too. You know, I'm not putting my name with, with just anything. So um, if I put my name with something, I've done the research and um, they're a good company. So Haas is a very, very, very good company. Small here in Georgia, very values based. You know, I don't, I don't want to get this, you know, turn into a, a pitch on, on Haas, but um, please, if you haven't, go ahead and, uh, and, and click that link below, check them out, see if there's something that you'd like. If you got any questions about any of that stuff, hit me up in the comments and let me know, hey, I found this, what's what's that? You know, what's, what is it about and whatnot? I can answer pretty much any question about anything on that website because I've been following Hoss for many, many years, okay? So I'm pretty well versed in all their products. Even their new stuff, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty good on. So anyway, um, that's it for now. Had some chicken time. Um, I will leave you with these photos of the finished product and uh, maybe a chicken too. All right, this is Daniel from home. Oh, I almost had it. <laughs> Daniel from home. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. This is Daniel from Saucy Dog Homestead, and we out.